Good afternoon, guys. Good evening, good morning, whatever time it is by you. Jonathan here in Oriental, North Carolina with my Tormach 1100M. Just wanted to put a couple of things down on video real quick. Um, some things that I'm probably going to put in a bigger video. But uh, one thing that strikes me, we've uh, assembled the... Um, Wow, I'm really losing it. We've assembled the enclosure, and while putting it together, there was a little bit of uh, line alignment issues with some holes and everything. No big deal. Uh, they've remedied the situation with what I'll call the oops kit. They had a problem with one of the prints on three of the pieces, and that was remedied. Um, it's not even worth talking about anymore because they've taken care of all of it. Of course, I'm the lucky guy to get it, and so I was with the die grinder making my holes bigger and then found a little box that uh, all the correct parts that were fixed came in and was like ah I don't believe this but anyway I just like to say the finish on the enclosure and I don't know if this is powder coating or paint or what but it's a really hard non-stick finish it is absolutely impressive it is absolutely amazing they've done a beautiful job on the enclosure to really make it look like a professional machine I've seen uh, a lot of different enclosures over the years, and, and I gotta tell you, it's just a really beautiful, I don't wanna say furniture grade, because it's not a couch, but um, an industrial grade doesn't really do it justice, but, but it really is a beautiful finish on it. Um, the chip trays also were very, very heavy duty. Um, had kind of like a wrinkly uh, wrinkle paint finish or something, but it, again, really heavy duty. I was gonna epoxy them, and I'm kinda like, well, you know, I've got all sorts of coatings and everything. Epoxy is expensive. I think this will probably be just fine. And if I wear them out, you know, when it comes time to prevent and maintenance and whatever, tear it down, I'll paint and find this superb coating then. But right now I'm going to run with what, what Tormach has provided. The butyl tape around the bottom um, is okay, but they shorted me some tape for the seams. And so I actually used some gray industrial sealant. Uh, Tormach, I spoke to Brian in the... Uh, uh, technical support uh, department and they said that they're recommending uh, silken or some other um, sealant which I'm sure they're probably going to start including in their kits. Um, I use an automotive grade industrial sealant that that should work. Um, it looks good with the machine but anyway on the vertical seams um, where the chip tray halves match you put enough on, it squishes out, it fills all the voids. With the butyl tape, you probably might have some problems trying to keep that tape there while you're mushing it all together. Um, second thing, I started cutting some chips and found that the air pressure sensor, um, when it by the time it says insufficient airflow, you've already run into trouble. So some of the troubles with the ATC and the drawbar are from low pressure. And I know they recommend a maximum of 120 or whatever, 125 pounds, I think. I'll, I'll have to double check the manual. In reality, crank it up to 135, probably 150. And then make sure, and somewhere I'm going to put on the front of the machine is a gauge that actually I can look at and see where my pressure is. Uh, my compressor, while a, a good industrial, older Craftsman compressor that I've rebuilt you know, probably twice in the last 23 years I've been running my shop. Um, we had a, I had an issue with the regulator on the back of the machine. I, I turned it, trying to turn it up and actually turned it down. And even though it was enough pressure, all of a sudden the tooling started to drag when the drawbar got low and the compressor didn't kick on. The compressor was towards the end of its, its uh, switch. So the best thing, run with as much pressure as you can. Uh, there was some talk about some guys adding an extra stack of washers and cranking the pressure way up. And I think that's probably, if you're running with issues on the collets coming out or whatever, um, even after you've cleaned them in acetone and done all the recommended uh, things with the anti-seas, um, definitely, most likely, more pressure and probably going to add another set of washers. I haven't had a problem with the tool coming out, but I'm just, I'm just playing here right now. Um, I've just been cutting a little port right here, which is going to be a bracket to a uh, to an engine mount. I, I can't see if you saw that, but uh, I'll put a picture in there. Um, tooling plate, Saunders tooling plate. Don't leave home without it. Beautiful, beautiful accessory. Absolutely critical. I did get my second vice that I was shorted in the in the original shipment, 
and uh, the soft draws finally showed up. So I'll be putting that second vise in to run my operations that I, that I have planned. Um, what else? Your emergency stop. Don't leave home without it. Um, Fusion. Fusion was doing some weird stuff, and it was substituting um, was substituting different height offsets. So it call out tool five, but in the G code line it was uh, inserting H1. And H1 I didn't have any tool programmed in either Path Pilot or Fusion, and so it started to try to drill to, drill to China. I uh, was very lucky that I used the Heimer, which is four and a half plus inches, as my zero. So I was always cutting air four and a half inches above the part. Um, but um, you don't have, if, if you're using the mouse to press the reset button, it's, it's kind of funny. Have your hand on that big red button right here when you're starting to proof a program. And of course, you know, it's kind of like going to a country, a new country to speak a foreign language. Until you actually get in it, and you start using it, you can study G-code, but until you see how the output is and what your machine likes, you're gonna wanna print out a copy of Tormox G-code reference in big type and make a few posters for G-code, M-code, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because all of a sudden you'll start to see things when you proof your program. You look at the outputs and you start looking for certain things and tweaking it. Um, another issue that is your friend are your sliders. Your feed, your feed, your speed, and your velocity sliders. Uh, definitely tweaking the RPMs as the program's running. I've run a Bridgeport mill probably the last 20 years, before that, or 15 years, and before that I had a little China mill uh, from Grizzly, and tweaking those feeds and speeds on the fly to find the sweet spot for every, for the material you're cutting, the bits you're using, the capacity of the machine, the, uh, et cetera, et cetera, um, to really dial that in and then make little notes where the sweet spot is for your feeds and speeds um, is, is the best way, and then you can go into the program, put those numbers in, and when, you know, and, and then you have a much nicer finished product. Um, another issue, you don't need a Ferrari to deliver pizzas. AVE's channel, he tells it like it is a lot of times. Some of the things I think he does is pretty harsh, taking tools apart and <laughs> destroying shit, but you know what happens when you're you know, an eight-year-old boy in a, man, in, a, in a man's body? You just start doing crazy shit. Um, So my point being that anybody who wants to, to bash the Tormach constellation of machines, understand this. This is a $10,000 mill. Okay, now with the enclosure and the tool changer and all the accessories, yes, it gets up there and it can easily exceed, you know, three times the cost of the base mill. But this is a 1,500 pound machine. It is not a 15,000 pound VMC from one of the heavyweights. It's an entry-level machine that will work just fine. It is the little engine that could. And if anyone knows how to make do with, with tools, it, it would be Jonathan. But I'm not making do. This is a very capable machine. It's a very powerful machine. And let me tell you something. You mess up with this, it could probably kill you. Okay? You got to be very careful. I, I just very simply... Um, had a piece of metal in one of my rags that flew and I, and I wind up wiping my hands and cut my hand wide open. You know, it, it's not a toy. Tormach is not a toy. In fact, one thing I will mention that I had a big trolley uh, tram to bring in here and mount the mill on the stand once it was assembled. Um, using an engine crane, let me tell you something, you better have two, three guys there. You should not move that alone. This is a very heavy piece of equipment. I've done a lot of crazy shit in my life, swinging big blocks off of tree limbs and all sorts of crazy stuff back in my youth. A um, little bit older, a little bit wiser now. Would definitely, definitely, definitely say you, you better have a good engine crane. You better know the limit of that arm, that outreach, and, and be very careful because they make it look very easy in the video, not bashing them. But let me tell you something, things can go wrong really quick. And so make sure you know how you're operating your engine crane within its limits. See all those crazy videos of crane operators on YouTube going off the sides of cliffs and lifting stuff up that it's beyond its capacity, whatever. Um, anyway, I'm rambling. Um, important. 
If you're on the fence, everybody's waiting for the MX. So let me tell you something. If you're a Wii machinist like I am, and you already have a bridge port, here's the issue. The TTS system, okay? With a little bit of attention, with maybe a, a one late night, you could tune this ATC so it works flawlessly. And I'll show you in, in one of my earlier videos, you could see how it hits the tool and kind of moves it. And, and now when my tools go in, I got it all lined up. I got it all set for the sweet spots and they go in and out nice and easy. Um, it takes a little bit of effort and that's, that's part of the package. Um, if you were to price out the AT, replacement ATC on a big machine, I'm sure you're gonna run into two, three times the cost of what this is. And so if you're going to bash it, um, know what you're talking about. The TTS system, genius system. On the bridge port, you have an R8 collet, and unless you're using ER collets, you're going to wind up changing those collets in and out all the time every time you have a tool change, part of being a manual machinist. However, when I spoke to the guys and I said, hey, I'm on the fence with the MX versus the M, I'm waiting for the BT-30 spindle. He says, well, if you have a bridge port, you already have tooling. He said, you can use the TTS in the bridge port. And I was like, I did not think of that. And guess what? This, this machine, these TTS collets are three-quarter. You put your three-quarter inch collet in your bridge port, you're going to handle probably 75, 80% of the tooling that, that you need. Um, Tormach sells these rings with a three quarter inch bore to press on tooling. So you can expand into tooling that you already have for like 20 bucks. Each one of these rings is 20 bucks. And then you can put it in your ATC and then all of a sudden you can put your fly cutter, you find the right mandrels on one of the websites or something to adapt from a straight R8 collet to a three quarter inch shank. Then you press one of these on, you're ready to go. And so it's all about economy and your budget and let me tell you you know it's it's like anything else um in life it takes effort it takes time it takes money it takes blood sweat tears and uh hopefully nobody gets hurt and at the end of the day this is an awesome little machine and, and i say little be because you know, the work envelope is 11 by 18. Obviously can be expanded. If you've got a tooling plate, you can move your work pieces to expand that. But at the end of the day, there is no other machine. And, I, and I'm not being paid to say this by Tormach or anything. There's no compensation. I'm not being paid. Um, th there is no other machine that's going to meet the capabilities, the accuracies, the speeds for or anywhere near the Tormach, the constellation of products. Everybody's going to sit here and go, oh, it's this, it's that. Let me tell you something. You go around, go around the back of the machine here, okay? This is the control box. One thing that impressed me is this control box in here. Let me tell you something, all right? This is mission control. I am in here, and I am impressed. I am impressed with what I'm seeing. All right, this is a very thought out, very well laid out. It's got circuit breakers in here, and I already popped a circuit breaker. Had a little problem, I, I cut my first part, and, and how life deals lemons sometimes. I cut my first part. The next day, I went to fire up the machine, cut another part, my coolant pump started going up and down. Well, like all Chinese motors that I get, the capacitor's probably bad. And it started popping a breaker. When it pops that breaker, it shuts everything off. The whole computer goes down everything. And so I was like, okay, I started messing with it, and, and it took a day and a half for Tormach to call me, but I had about a dozen items that I was concerned about. I shared some things with, with technical support, I want to say uh, Brian, and he, and he was very happy to listen and to take, to take my recommendations. In fact, I want to say I taught him a few things about the machine as well. And so one of the things I want to share with you guys is when you're tramming the bed, when you're leveling the bed, my personal opinion, tram the bed first. I mean, level the bed first with a bubble level, get, you, get yourself in the ballpark, and then take, spend the money, all right? I, I use the regular dial indicator that I already own, but spend the money, go to Edge Technologies, and get one of these puppies. And this will make your life a lot easier, uh, repeatability a lot quicker, 
and you'll be able to trim in your X and Y and Z and all that. And uh, I was off, I want to say about a thousandths in the X, in the tilt of the X, left to right. So I figured, oh, I'll have to take the, the head off the mill and put a thousand shim or half a thousand shim. I didn't have shim stop big enough at that point or a big enough piece. And so I left it, but then I put the enclosure on. Well, guess what? Putting the enclosure on causes subtle changes in the stand. And guess what? It's now spot on, zero, along the x-axis. So when you're doing the procedure, and this goes for every mill, I know Haas and Herco and all the big boys come in and they have a team come and set up your mill, but depending on what the base is on, it's gonna settle, temperature's gonna change, things are gonna move. It'd be great if everybody could afford a Renishaw ball bar set, set up like uh, uh, Alan Holabach on his YouTube channel. Goes through it with his little mill and it's very educational. And the accuracy where you can check the accuracy of your machine. Um, and I'll get into all that with the accuracy and everything, but right now it's within spec of what it's advertised in the manual. So I'm, I'm a happy camper. I can chase what I want, try to get as tight as I can, but at the point it's kind of negative returns. So that's my opinion right now. I've already run, uh, I don't know, 15, 16 minutes at this point. And uh, I hope to share a lot more with you guys. But I just want to put a couple of things. My lovely Lisa made a Taz sticker for me, and I want to put a few other stickers for, uh, you know, for posterity and whatnot. But anyway, stick with me, guys. I'll try to share some useful, hands-on information. I'm not a paid channel. I'm not. If, if you like what I'm talking about, then subscribe, click the like button, and share this. I'm going to try to share everything that I've learned with you guys and try to distill it and condense it into the most, you know, uh, nutrient-dense, information-dense uh, information possible in, in every video cast. I have like a three to five minute rule, and so I want to share it with you, and I know everybody's busy, so I don't want to sit here, blah, 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 but it's very exciting. Started cutting chips, started rutting rocking and rolling with them flying and I was like oh yeah this is it this is it and and so we got a lot more excitement coming um, a lot more projects coming across the board and so I hope to share that with all of you and uh, I just hope everybody enjoys the weekend stay warm stay safe talk to you soon